It's great to be back with you at First Baptist Church of Golden. As an ambassador from Open Door Fellowship in the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to extend warm greetings from my friends and our brothers and sisters in Christ to you also. Today, it is my hope to give you a clear and joyful picture of what God the Father, through Jesus Christ, along with the Spirit, want the whole church body to, to embrace with love and commitment about the, saints, the season of life as a single person. Um, without shame or sorrow. Before we begin, let's pray. Lord, um, to, uh, pray. Um, Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to be um, with with you and with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, would you come and um, be with each of us. If any of us have um, insecurities or fears, just pray, Lord, that you would um, um, make us calm and help us to feel um, welcome um, as we would as we were, if we were encountering a dear friend. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, today I hope to emphasize to you our value to God as a single brothers and sisters or um, um, married uh, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. To do that, I will encourage us to have a balanced viewpoint from the word of the Lord. Tim and Kathy Keller and his, um, wrote a beautiful book that Lynn told me he would be reflecting on in combination with God's word in his sermon series. The title of this book as you may already know, is the meaning of marriage. Um, I found it interesting that Tim was a pastor um, and of a church that was 80% um, single. And in this particular church, I, I just thought that it was amazing to have a population in that church be 80% single. I once attended a church, um, Southern Gables, and then uh, Bear Valley, uh, where I met Lynn and Connie, and 35 um, to 50 members of the singles group that I was involved in in both churches were single, but nowhere in that whole church were 80% of the, of the attendees um, single. Not long after I started preaching in this, um, after Tim started preaching in this particular church, Tim Keller soon uh, realized that single people cannot survive without a balanced view of marriage. Why is it that single people cannot survive? Because they will either overvalue marriage as they desperately attempt to find a mate, or they will undervalue marriage if they become discouraged 
in their struggle to find a mate. Taking marriage to an extreme in either direction is a pathology. What is a pathology, you might ask? A pathology is defined in the Webster Dictionary as the study of diseases and the changes that take place in the body due to the effects of them. The disease that I want us to be aware of today um, is a disease that we can't deal with on our own without Christ. That disease is our sin nature. Um, so Christ is dealing with with his believers through sanctification in that daily process. Although I'm not proud of it, I stand here today as a living example of someone who has done both of these extremes. My parents were divorced when I was somewhere between the ages of six or seven. Even when they were married, although I have some good memories of mom and dad growing up, my dad was not a strong presence in my family. And that itself was a learned behavior for my dad because he experienced the same thing in his home growing up. Due to growing up with a deep sense of loneliness and to, to a degree over bonding with mom, I spent many years overvaluing marriage. I had a deep desire to get married and find a girl to take care of me so that I wouldn't be lonely. If I'm honest, I wanted to get married because I wanted to have sex. Can you relate? <laughs> uh, the Jeff Foxworthy joke, there was a joke that I was sitting on the couch with my mom and um, we were watching Jeff Foxworthy uh, and he told this joke, he said this, he said getting married just because you want to have sex is like buying a ticket on an airplane just because you want a bag of peanuts. <laughs> My deep felt self-focused desire to, uh, to be married fueled the flames of addiction to pornography. My frustration over not getting married and feeling guilty with the struggle over pornography led me to attempt suicide. After surviving that, my addiction got worse and I dealt with it by self-medicating my pain. I discovered that the way to deal with my pain came I came to terms with my singleness and, and was a desire to um, surrender myself to a deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ which included becoming more open and honest with my feelings toward him a relationship to God, the Father, through the saving blood of Jesus Christ, is the penultimate relationship. It is the most important and significant relationship we need. Don't miss this. A relationship with God, through His Word, is the penultimate relationship. The word penultimate means the gift of all gifts. If I tell you today um, I would not be here um, if not for the grace and the love and mercy given to me through the cross and through a 
a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You and I were created with a divine purpose. Understanding his purpose starts with me knowing him and letting him be my uh, penultimate relationship. Second, understanding his purpose means that I realize I was created to praise God. An example I heard on, the ra on, the, on a video once goes like this. What do you say when you see a really beautiful su sunset? Wow! <laughs> so, what do you say, what does a, a man say when he sees a beautiful girl? Wow! wow. <laughs> and what does, um, what's the first thing you say when, when, you're, when the Broncos or your favorite sports team <laughs> makes a great play? We raise our hands, we jump up and down, and we say, Wow! <laughs> when, um, when we stand before Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, some will um, raise their arms high and others with the same joyful attitude will fall flat, prostrate to the ground with tears and exclaim, Wow! We were created, most importantly, to praise the Lord. When we realize that we were created to know Him and to praise Him, His investment in my life and ours shows that you and I are the penultimate relationship to him. Not the stars, not the rocks, and, and, and not the sunrise. But it's us that he died for. Let's take a look at some scriptures so that we can see together how valuable each person is collectively, whether we are single or married. Before we do, there's an important um, point I want to emphasize. Um, the Apostle Paul, who wrote the book of First and Second Corinthians, also wrote one third of the entire New Testament. Um, and so Jesus Christ and the Apostle Paul are uh, anchors as examples as single men to show us um, our value to God as single people. Um, so we can be valuable to God whether we are married or whether we are single. But he had a, a, a spiritual marriage to Christ just as you and I do who, who follow uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, let's see. I said that part already. As, um, single, as a single person, I can experience Jesus' love and learn to walk in that love. He will um, make me content and make us content, even if he chooses for you or I to remain single. Um, here are a few verses from uh, 1 Corinthians, and I want to show you a beautiful um, uh, image that a young man with muscular dystrophy told.
taught me when he led me to Christ. He said this, um, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, um, um, I am like a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all knowledge, if I have the gift of faith that can move mountains, but do not have Jesus, I am nothing. Do you see the contrast? Love and Jesus, it's the same thing. Uh, so <coughs> God is not talking to us when he talks about love. He's not talking about us in terms, or talking about love in terms of phileo love, which is a brotherly love that you would have for your brother or sister. And it's not the erotic love that a husband or, or a wife might share. Um, together. This love that we are talking about is agape, unconditional love. It is the love that God has for us, and it's the love that he wants to manifest through us to others. Um, uh, let's see. See, um, First John 1.12 and John 3.16. If uh, I focus on the fact that I'm not married, then I am saying, hey, because I'm not married, I'm not an important part of the body. Now look with me at the church body as a whole, as described in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. It says, just as a body has many parts, um, just as a body, though one, has many parts, um, they form one body. So it is with Christ. Whether, Greek, whether Jews or Greeks, Greeks, slave or free, and I might add, single or married, we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, as the body is made up of one part, not made up of one part, but many. Now, if I should, if, if a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, then the, um, it would not for that reason cease to par be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, each one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If the body were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Um, in the book, The Meaning of Marriage, Tim Keller points out this. There are distinct advantages to remaining single. As a man, A man who is married to um, can certainly learn from his wife and a wife from her husband about the differences 
between the sexes, but their experience is limited because unlike single people, um, they are limited in, uh, in their opportunities to learn from, um, from uh, others other than their wife and their husband. Hopefully because they're um, devoted um, to their husband or to their wife um, as God is calling them to be. Um, let's see, the single brother or sister is free to establish many friendships which they can learn various personality types and about them. They could be described as cross-gender enrichment. This is the way that single people can complete each other and reflect the image of God together. And then, to add, if, the, if God does call them to be married, they are more equipped because of what they have learned from each other. Um, another distinct advantage to being single is that the single brother or sister has more time available to devote to their relationship to Jesus Christ and with their uh, service to others in Jesus' name. To be honest, the early church embraced single people of the church body in many ways much better than the church as we know it today, largely because the churches were more community-based. Widows, for example, were sheltered and protected by the church. But widows outside the church were fined by Caesar Augustus if they were not, if they did not remarry within two years. Um, in, in, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the Apostle Paul takes a more balanced approach. He warned us about the cost of marriage and promoted the value of being single. He says, if a, if a man marries, he has not sinned, and if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. And he also says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, do not look for a wife. Now that was uh, something that really struck me in the book and I learned a lot through meditation on it because uh, what the Lord was uh, conveying to me is again he says, if you're single, do not look for a wife. But in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18 verse 22 it says if a man finds a wife he finds a good thing and receives honor and blessing from the Lord so in my um, in my meditation I thought so how do I find a wife if it's God's will without looking well I give it to God every time the desire comes up I tell him and so the peace that comes with that is that if it's God's desire, even though I'm 59 years old, I don't have to worry about it. He's going to just make it happen. And if it's the, the his desire for me to be married, then I can rejoice and I will have, we will all, as single people, have um, more rewards to receive from him um, 
in heaven. So it says, lift your desires to the Lord and continue to pray to give your life and your service in all that you do to him. If you are supposed to marry, it doesn't matter how old you are. You, um, he will bring that mate across your path. One movie that illustrates that really well is the movie Amazing Grace. When, when William Wilberforce met his wife. If the Lord, if it's the Lord's will, no one can tear two people apart. And if it's not the Lord's will, no matter how hard you try, you cannot put your mar put a marriage together. You will only bring, continue to bring harm to yourself by leaning on your own strength. <coughs> Whether married or single, as a disciple of Jesus, we need to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all your uh, ways, and He will make your path straight. That's uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I just want to add one other point in closing that I heard this morning. I was listening to a guy talk about his love for basketball and how competitive he was. And he learned as a basketball player um, to let go that the only, only audience that matters whether we're married, or whether we're playing basketball, or whether we're single, or whether we're at work, is our audience is Jesus Christ. Not, not the 50,000 fans in the stands, but our only audience that we want to strive to bring joy and pleasure to is Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Well, one of the many things that I love about you, Randy, is your honesty and your just gut level transparency. One of the things that, uh, after he ran over my foot, one of the things that Randy reminded me of was that there was a time in his life when he was so desperate to be married, um, and there were so many things going on in his life, and he, he said he prayed this prayer to God, and it, and it broke through for him. I want to share that prayer, just to, as a refresher to you, sure. and then you tell us what God did after. He said, God, I love you, but I don't trust you. Yeah. I said, I love you, but I trust you. I want to, but I don't know how. I remember laying in my bed, during Christmas 1988, saying those words just after uh, Chuck Swindoll was um, um, doing a sermon on on hope, and um, I um, I was I was desperate, and and as I I sobbed, I was almost sick to my stomach. I was sobbing so hard. But as I let go of that, in the still small voice of the Lord, he responded back to me. I've got you, Randy. I knew you didn't trust me. I've got you from here. And I was able to relax. And I had lots to learn. From then on, I still struggled off and on with pornography. And, but I'm grateful to the work of people, of great friends like these, and, and people at Open Door Fellowship that um, helped me to, be, to break free. I've been a member now of Open Door for 24 years, and it's an honor to serve him as an elder there. Um, so. so whether single or married, every one of us needs to have the same 
guideline for our lives. Trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Don't lean on our own understandings. In all 